Hey, this is Rick Terry, your Maine Real Estate Guide, and today I'm on location in the town of Lakeville, Maine. And what I'm bringing to market today is a 42.6 plus or minus acre surveyed lot out here on Homestead Drive in the town of Lakeville. This is a, 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 a beautiful location if you're looking for a uh, a quiet getaway place where you can build a cabin or park a camper or pitch a tent. Uh, this would be a great a great place for it. Uh, there is a driveway in place. I'll show a little bit more about that here in a bit. There is a nice little water feature down um, on, on the property and show you what the woods look like. This was probably last logged about 25 years ago, so it looks really nice. There's a lot of, it's mostly a hardwood stand and from here, uh, where I'm standing here, uh, uh, I can see beech, yellow birch, uh, some aspen, and some gray birch uh, is what I see here and a, and a fir tree there. Um, this is part of an old subdivision that was done 20 or so years ago. And I've had a couple of questions on this, uh, this lot uh, regarding uh, how built up it is because I've used the word subdivision. Well, subdivision is when you carve up land and subdivide it into smaller par parcels. So all of the lots out here have a minimum lot size of, of 40 acres, which means you can't further subdivide this lot. It's 42.6 acres, so you cannot split it. And so uh, the minimum lot size is, is 40 acres. And that's the same for the lots that abut this for all the neighbors. For mostly, they're just wooded lots. There are very few people out here that have built camps uh, at this point. There are some. I, I passed a couple on the way in, and we are 5.6 miles from Route 6, uh, uh, is where we've come to this, this location here where this lot's located. So 5.6 miles from the tar, 5.6 miles roughly to the nearest utility lines. And when you're that far away from power, and utilities, uh, this is about as developed as it gets. So yes, mostly around here in this portion of Lakeville, it is largely undeveloped wood, wood lots. So if you're looking for a recreational place where you're not gonna see the neighbors camp, well, this is probably the place for you. Uh, this, this lot, 42.6 acres, coming to market at $54,000. And it's a it's a beautiful property, and uh, I got my boys with me today, and they're they're panting because uh, their German Shorty pointers. And when they were released from the truck, they went full German Shorty pointer, which is nothing you want to do as a human, because it uh, involves expending a tremendous amount of energy in a short period of time. But nonetheless, they had to do it, and uh, they're all the better for it. So let's go for a walk. So here's a closer view of the uh, the driveway that's been put in. Put in place here on the on the property. It even includes a nice culvert right at the beginning of the beginning of the road for water management. The road is in very good condition. It's actually got real gravel that was hauled in here when they built up the road. With a little trimming of some of the some of the trees, you could have a have a real nice road that's already here for your use. But this is kind of a Look, see of what's available here for trees. There's a, a tremendous amount of beech here. So on a on a mast year, you're going to have a lot of beech nuts. There's no question about it. This is a great area to hunt white-tailed deer and black bear, rough grouse. Again, largely undeveloped. The entire town of Lakeville <coughs> has a year-round population of 104 individuals. So that's uh, pretty sparsely populated. And as I was doing a little tax research on, on this 42.6 plus or minus acre parcel of land that's coming to market at $54,000. Notice that the taxes here, the property taxes, went down from, from a year ago. They, were, they decreased by about 10 bucks. They're now around $96. I've seen some comments on uh, some of our other videos about how expensive property taxes are in Maine. <coughs> And I guess depending on what locality you're in, it probably is a problem. But 42.6 acres for, and the property taxes here on an annual basis are under 100 bucks. I don't know. In my book, that's pretty cheap. But here's a nice little clearing 
it's kind of grown up a little bit here, but this would be a good place to, if you uh, get rid of the bushes that are here in place, you got about a, oh, it looks to be about maybe a, a quarter acre that uh, they cleared. And you could clear more <laughs> if you need if you need more, but this would be a place where you could park a camper or pitch a tent that's already in, in place here on the property. So Lakeville has, uh, has one of the lo lowest mill rates for property taxes in the entire state of Maine, which is, uh, and they work hard to maintain that, which is quite evident since, you know, their taxes went down. I don't know that my taxes have gone down ever. <laughs> so, so if you're looking for a low tax community to uh, build a recreational property or, or even a homesteading property, I mean, you could do that out here. You could live out here. It's 5.6 miles to the closest utility line. You'd have to be off grid. But there are two fellas that live up the road uh, and actually have a homestead at the end of Homestead Drive. They've been there a number of years, got a nice place with a workshop. Or you can get a, they got uh, a nice uh, photovoltaic power system with a generator and battery storage, drilled well, septic, and they live here year round at the end of Homestead Drive. And I guess you could too, but if you're just looking for a place to Maybe go hang a tree stand or pitch a tent in the summertime or ride an ATV. This property here on Homestead Drive may be just the ticket for you. If you follow the terrain feature down to the little valley that's on the property, you can determine that. If you look at the topo map that I'll provide to you, uh, you can see where that, that, that's at. It looks to me to, that that little brook that was down there had quite a bit of water in it. But uh, on a dry year, it would probably be pretty dry, but this year we've had a lot of rain, and it was a nice little, nice little water feature. And every once in a while, beavers inhabit down there. There were a couple old beaver dams. There was no, uh, no fresh workings, but uh, there were a couple older ones. And so from time to time, you'll have beavers that will make a nice little pond down there. But I guess in answer to you know the question, how densely developed is, the lots out there in Lakeville on Homestead Drive, well, this densely developed. It's uh, mostly trees. So this roadway that I'm on here, uh, I, I guess if you continued uh, expanding the driveway deeper in, you could just, this, this comes right off the end of the driveway and continues, uh, uh, it really bisects the property uh, entirely, but uh, so you can get back here quite a ways and there is a footprint of a road that, that you need to improve a little bit if you were further back, but it, you wouldn't need to improve it too much. It's in really good shape. <laughs> and, uh, and you can really see, you know, this is largely a hardwood stand of woods with uh, you know, mostly yellow birch, beech, some maple, and a few soft softwood trees uh, thrown into the mix. So for the most part, this is a gently sloping, kind of rolling topography here on this property. It's pretty easy to navigate. <coughs> Not overly steep. There are steep places, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to navigate. You can drive right to it on Homestead Drive. And there is a driveway in place already, which is really, really nice. There is a road owners association out here. And you would have to, if you owned it out here, you'd have to join it. There's an annual fee. Last I knew it was $150 per lot. And that takes care of some grading, <coughs> ditch work, replacing culverts and bridges when it has time uh, requires. And with everybody chipping in through their association fees, the roads are in pretty decent shape. And the good thing about being part of a road association, not the least of which is having you know better roads for access, is you do have a voice because every every property owner has a has a vote. So you know, and I I believe the bylaws pretty much stipulate like if you own three lots, you'd have three votes. If you own one lot, you'd have one vote. But nonetheless, you get a vote. So you get to, you know, you can uh, participate in where your money's being spent, probably a little more directly than 
when you pay your property taxes in the town you live in. Well, as I was walking along, I came upon this beech tree with this really interesting looking mushroom growing on it. I have no idea what it is. If you are a mushroom forager and recognize what this variety is, I'd be interested to know a little more, but it is very cool looking. There's a, another little patch down below. That is a, an interesting looking mushroom. So as I'm, as I'm walking through this patch of woods that you know looks to be last logged around 25 years ago, it looks really nice. And the good thing about you know the patch of woods that's been it's been that long since it's been been cut is you can you can walk through the woods pretty easily between the trees because the canopy is recovered so it kind of chokes out the, the smaller undergrowth <laughs> so being able to go for just a walk off trail through the woods is easily accomplished without uh, having to carry a machete with you you know in our part of the world up here in central and northern maine <laughs> Pretty much the preferred wood species for for uh, wood heat would be beech, which there are a tremendous amount. This is beech right here. Uh, we don't have a lot of oak in our uh, in our world up this way. There's some along the rivers and a few ridge tops, but <clears throat> predominantly um, beech and maple and, and birches make up our our uh, hardwood species. <clears throat> beech doesn't really have any commercial applications for the most part, but it makes great firewood. And it does produce a mass crop. Usually every other year is a mast year. I believe this year in most parts of the state <clears throat> will, be, will be beech nuts. I know there are a lot of beech nuts on the trees at my house. But as you walk through the woods, you can see where the logging trails were when they cut this, you know, back 25 years ago. Like I'm standing on one right here. It's got a few small stems coming up through the middle of it now. But you can still make out where the trail was. This is a cool little spot here in Lakeville on lot 12 that I just stumbled upon walking the property, uh, taking photos and, and uh, absorbing all the benefits and features of the, of the lot. You know, I found this nice rock outcropping that is about, at the top of it, it's about 30 feet above where I'm standing down here. And uh, <clears throat> that would be a, a great natural blind if you're a deer hunter. You could be situated right on top of that outcropping, maybe trim a few, a few trees. Down here where I'm standing in the leaves, it's all deer tracks down here um, through the leaves and you can kind of make out right here in this general area, kind of a game trail that really follows the base of, of that, uh, that rise in elevation uh, where the, the deer are picking their way along. And then there's an old, an old uh, woods road right there where it brightens up in the screenshot. That would be an ideal location. The wind's perfect here be right in your face if you were situated up, up top. You bring a, a just a nice little chair, make yourself a little simple blind. That's a great place to, to sit and wait. So as mentioned, this is a surveyed lot with a this part of an old subdivision. So the plan is on file, pins are in the ground, and the side boundaries are painted. Now that being said, there's enough paint to determine where the sidelines are. But one item of property maintenance that many people overlook is on raw land or even land that's been improved upon, it has a house on it, is you forget to paint your boundaries. <clears throat> and over time, uh, trees fall down, uh, bearing trees, uh, and paint fades and the lines can disappear. And then you have to go through the expense of hiring a, a surveyor to, uh, you know, uh, lay the lines out again for you. So 
as if you were to purchase this property, I would advise that you walk it, you get to know it, and uh, <clears throat> take some time and, and, and freshen up the paint on the boundaries while you still uh, have it to, to help you lay it out. Uh, what you don't want to do is do the mistake, and uh, I heard, recently heard a story, uh, I'll share it with you with, uh, without naming any names, <clears throat> but uh, a uh, real estate agent that I, I know uh, owns a piece of property, and he's a real estate agent. He's not a surveyor. And uh, he was advised, because he wanted to build, build some storage buildings, that maybe he ought to uh, lay his line to get, his, get the lot surveyed so he knows exactly where, where uh, to build his building. And he disregarded that advice from, a, uh, from one individual and then a, uh, the second individual, which is, uh, was actually the contractor that he hired to build the buildings, uh, it gave, him, gave him that same advice. Maybe you ought to, he said, I think you're a little close to the lines and probably ought to get a surveyor involved just to be sure, be safe. Well, he disregarded all that advice. And apparently, after the fact, they have determined that his building is, 28 feet of his building is on someone else's property. And the rest of his building is too close to the boundary line. So it's in violation of the local, local building ordinances. So that's going to be a costly era just because, you know, you sell real estate doesn't make you a surveyor, no more than I am. But I can find where I believe the boundary lines to be, you know, based on the, the survey maps and evidence on the ground, but I'm not a surveyor. And so if you are in need of getting some survey work done, you know, um, definitely want you want to do that but here if you buy a piece of property and the lines are are still visible just keep them keep them visible you know every uh, line paint lasts about 10 years <coughs> give or take and so if you every once in a while while you're walking walking your line with maybe with a buddy or or your your spouse one with a can of paint or one with a machete or a blazing axe you know you can freshen up the lines and and uh, it's just the only cost involved really is a gallon of paint. But if you have to hire a surveyor to lay out your lines, I had to do that recently on my property because uh, uh, my lot was carved off about, uh, I don't know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And I neglected that, that, that advice and I had a new person move in next door that uh, was kind of encroaching. So I paid for a surveyor to run my line you know, the pin, I showed them where the pins were, um, but all they had to do was lay the line out with their special GPS equipment, and he did it. But it cost me two grand to run about a thousand feet of line. So, line maintenance. I guess that's your tip for the day. If you own raw land, large or small, you want to make sure that uh, you keep your boundaries marked and and uh, don't let uh, time erase, erase where uh, your boundaries are. It'll, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. So if you're looking for a 40 plus or minus acre lot, you wanna take a close look at this lot 12 out here on Homestead Drive. It's 42.6 plus or minus acres, surveyed, pins in the ground, paint on the trees. It's a nice property, driveway in place, a little clearer to go pitch a tent. This would be a great little uh, land holding, you know, if you've, you know, got some other investments or whatnot, and you would like to take some cash off the table or get some money out of the stock market and put it in a tangible asset. Well, this 42.6 surveyed acre lot out here in Lakeville might be just the ticket. Uh, you know, other than keeping, as I mentioned before, keeping your lines painted, there's really not much you have to do as far as maintenance on a raw piece of land. And you can enjoy it. You can come out here with a cup of coffee, couple of friends, walk around, have a campfire, listen to the breeze in the trees, look for white-tailed deer, bring your German shorty or pointers and let them run through the woods like a couple of maniacs. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it, nonetheless, uh, you get to enjoy it. It's a tangible asset. You can touch it. It's not just a one or a zero, a, you know, a bit or a bite on a computer someplace. This is, you know, you can touch it. You can walk on it. You can smell it. So if this is something of interest to you, you want more information, give Rick Terry, your main real estate guy, a call at area code 207-731-9902.